and welcome to your favorite weekly series from Progress Virginia. This is the Richmond Recap, and I'm your host, Kimberly Nario. Crossover, special session, and lawsuits, oh my. The General Assembly continues to be as riveting as General Hospital during Sweeps Week and we are ready to dish. We're at the point where the House bills are going over to the Senate and the Senate bills are going over to the House. Remember y'all, it's a group project. Here's a little breakdown of the week. House and Senate committees met at the beginning of the week for some fun formalities that basically said, yeah, we'll keep this going for a special session. Thank you to our colleagues on the other side of the aisle for voting down the extension to regular session and making the governor step in to create a special session so we all have enough time to get the work done that we're here to do. Leave it to the GOP to make us jump through unnecessary bureaucratic hoops just to do what we set out to do in the first place. So much for small government. On Wednesday, lawmakers were back in committee meetings, so let's get into those updates. We are past crossover now, and Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Luckily for all of us, most of these bills are displaying some serious couple goals by having both a House and a Senate version of the legislation. Super cute. Let's see what those couples are up to. Let's start with criminal justice reform. First up, bail reform. Delegate Herring's pretrial data collection bill will require collection of data on all adults charged with a crime. If this reminds you of Senator Lucas's bill, then you've been doing your homework. Both HB 2110, which passed committee, and SB 1391 would be major steps in comprehensive criminal justice reform and understanding the disproportionate impact of cash bail on BIPOC people read major steps in beginning to dismantle the racism of our criminal justice system. Here for all of this. Something I know we're all oh so curious about, marijuana legalization. SB 1406 and HB 2312, the next couple of weeks in committee will be a big test for pot. The House and Senate have some major differences in how they want to tackle equitable legalization, and there are lots of details to hash out. It's time to keep up the pressure to make sure legislators know they have to get this done this session. The House and Senate are also still working out their differences on automatically expunging some criminal records. This one could end up in conference committee, and this is a must because how are we going to legalize pot and still have people locked up or being discriminated against for it? Uh, the answer is we're not. Speaking of things to leave in the past, like your toxic ex, we have got to get rid of the death penalty. Remember, both bills to abolish the death penalty pass in both chambers. Mercury might be in retrograde, but the message here is loud and clear. With HB 2263 passing committee and being re-referred to finance, the Commonwealth is gearing up to say goodbye to capital punishment. See you never again. In voting rights news, the Voting Rights Act of Virginia gives us all the goods when it comes to voters' rights. I'm talking about stronger protections for Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities and language minorities. This couple is also cuddled up in committee, but don't worry, we are on it. Listen, we are out here and we're trying to vote. Which brings us to constitutional amendments. Both the House and Senate have passed constitutional amendments to restore voting rights to people who have previously been convicted of a felony. This is another one where the House and Senate are taking different approaches. Senator Locke's Rights Restoration Amendment, SJ272, passed committee this week, but is another one that is likely headed to conference committee. Also here for Senator Evans' bill to repeal the constitutional provision defining marriage as only a union between one man and one woman. SJ270 passed House Committee, so maybe Virginia really will be for lovers. Finally. This bill would also establish a constitutional amendment guaranteeing the fundamental right of marriage to all, regardless of sex or gender, and establish that all marriages are treated equally under the law. And remember, this is coupled up with Delegate Sickles' House Bill. 
Now, let's take a look at workers' rights. There was a tie vote in Senate General Laws on Delegate Prices Bill that is part of the Domestic Workers Bill of Rights, which expands the definition of employer to include a person employing one or more domestic workers, essentially extending protections to domestic workers. Kind of weird that something with the words human rights in the title didn't pass by a landslide, but okay. On the House side, they heard partner bill from Senator McClellan, which reported out of committee today. This couple is still alive, so stay tuned. Before we sign off, there's a little more good news to share over in education. It's 2021, y'all, and if we're not talking equity, what are we even talking about? The Senate bill for financial aid equity passed committee and the House bill is waiting to be heard. This couple makes higher education more accessible to immigrant and undocumented students of the Commonwealth. Speaking of accessibility, the bills for G3, the Get Skilled, Get a Job, Give Back program to make community college free to qualifying students are still in committee. With looming student loan debt, G3 could be a great option for well, anyone and everyone who qualifies for it. Shout out to everyone who doesn't have to make payments on their federal student loans until at least September. I see you, I feel you, I am you. There's a pair of bills on the table that will require teacher principal division superintendent evaluations to include an evaluation of cultural competency. And can I just say, it's about time. The world is wild, and if we're going to be molding the minds of tomorrow, we must come correct. These two bills are still in committee, but stay tuned. Onward to healthcare. We have a problem, and Delegate Herring is looking to fix it. The Task Force on Maternal Health Data and Quality Measures, HB 2111, will evaluate maternal health data collection processes to guide policies in the Commonwealth to improve maternal care, quality, and outcomes for all birthing people of the Commonwealth. This bill helps us all, but especially Black women who are more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications. Another reason why Delegate Aird's House Joint Resolution recognizes racism as a public health crisis. This one is still in committee and we will have more updates soon. The Senate bills to remove the prohibition on the provision of coverage for abortions in the state health insurance exchange advanced in the House this week, and we are thrilled to see this bill move forward. And on the housing rights front, on the table is a bill that will prohibit a landlord from accepting full payment of rent and then proceeding with an eviction filing. HB 2014, which passed committee, is necessary always but absolutely essential during the pandemic. Another bill we're watching is one that will prohibit housing discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, elderliness, familial status, source of funds, sexual orientation, gender identity, status as a veteran or disability. And guess what? It was reported out of committee, boom. If you're into clean air and clean water, this environmental justice update is for you. The Senate bill to sunset coal tax credits passed House committee, moving Virginia one step closer to clean energy and better business. Senator Deeds bill to support a just transition by ensuring communities have advanced notice of power plant closures, SB 1247 advanced in the House, yay. And in most amazing news, a bill that deals with local financing of clean energy has passed both chambers. Normally, when I think about energy and money, I think of Dominion and how our money is lining their pockets. But this bill, HB 1859, makes me feel much, much better. Now, for our heroes and zeros. The hero for the week is everyone who was able to get a COVID-19 vaccine, including our very own team member, Jen. Be sure to check out her video on TikTok and Instagram to see her experience. Zero for the week is Senator Donovan. There was a harmless bill on the table to create a secretary of labor. 
this bill would create a secretariat out of an already existing temporary office. Senator Donovan felt offended by the term labor because she felt the term was too limiting and would pander to the unions. Excuse me, labor seems to work just fine for the US government. Anyway, now we have a bill moving forward to create a secretary of workforce. Quick shout out. Congrats to Virginia organizing on their virtual Labor Day earlier this week. They lobbied to declare racism a public health crisis and to abolish the death penalty. We see you and we appreciate you. Thanks for joining us, Richmond Recap Royalty. Follow us here on Facebook as well as Instagram, Twitter, and of course, TikTok. We hope to see you next week because, hey, it's nice to have your mug around.